Today we're going to talk about box fill and pull box calculations. In 31416A, we talk about volume of a box. Now the volume of the box just isn't what is inside the box as far as the cubic inch. But if we put a device ring or an extension ring on there, and we add all that together, that will give us the total volume of our box. That's 31416A. In 31416A1, um, it talks about standard size boxes that are listed. And you'll see those in table 31416A. In 31416A2, it states that non-metallic boxes shall have the volume marked by the manufacturer inside the box. Take a look next time and you'll see that. Inside the box will be marked cubic inches. If you look inside of a two gang box, a lot of times you'll see 36 cubic inches. And that's how large the box is and that's what you use for your box fill calculation. There are items that affect your box fill and they are these. First, your conductors. If we look at table 31416B, it gives us standard size conductors and how many cubic inch they take up as far as room inside of a box. Take a look at that table. This code article also tells us that every conductor counts as one conductor, whether it comes out of the box or it passes through the box. Now, if we do loop our conductors through the box, which you'll see in a lot of commercial applications, if that conductor is twice as long as the conductor length that's required to meet code, which we learned last time was six inches of conductor from where it enters the box. So that would be six inches times two inches. We would have 12 inches of conductor. If that is the case, then you have to count it as two conductors. So that is the time where it would be a little more. In article B2 of 31416, it tells us that cable clamps inside of a box they count as one of the largest conductor. So all of the cable clamps together only count as one conductor. Remember that when you're doing your box fill calculations. In 31416B3, we see that fixture studs and hickeys, no, not the kind on your neck, but those are fixture supports that go inside of a box. Those also count as only one conductor. So don't forget that when you're doing a calculation that you have a support for a box that has a light fixture in it. In 31416B4, then we talk about devices. And here's one that I want to make sure that you understand well. Every device counts as two conductors of the size of conductor that is connected to it. There are cases, especially in the kitchen, where you're going to have a number 14 conductor in a box and a number 12 conductor in the same box. And if your device has the number 14s connected to it, then that device counts as two number 14 wires. Your other device, if it has the number 12s connected to it, counts as two number 12 conductors. So remember that when you're doing your box fill calculations. Then we go into 31416B5, which talks about our ground wires. Our ground wires all count as one of the largest conductor in the box. In, this, in the last example that I gave you, think about it when you have number 14s and number 12s in the box. If I were to ask you the question, you have all these ground wires in the box, how would you calculate those? What would your answer be? Well, hopefully that your answer would be they would all count as one number 12 wire. Let's do some calculations right now. And remember, I would like for you to, when you first see the example, pause the video and try to do the calculation yourself first and see if you come up with the same numbers I do. Let's do these calculations. All right, why don't you follow along with what I'm doing on the screen? Uh, hopefully you guys looked at this, or you're gonna look at this, stop the video, 
and then try to do one of these examples on your own. Uh, remember, you guys will definitely learn more uh, when you do something on your own than if you just listen to what I have to say and then don't follow through with doing anything yourself. So uh, I would really appreciate it if you would at least try one of these two on your own. So let's get started. In this box, I want to know how large of a box I need. So I have three 14 twos with the ground, one device, and two cable clamps in this box. Well, let's remember that number 14s from our table Number 14s, they equal 2 cubic inches per conductor. So let's get into our calculation. Uh, follow along, you can do it however you want, but I try to stay organized with my calculations. That way I don't lose something in the process. So once again, do it however you would like. I'm just showing you how I do it so I can keep everything straight. So what I look at first is I have three 14-2 with ground Romexes. So I would start like this. I would have, I have three cables times two wires. That's what the two of the 14-2 stands for is it has two conductors plus a ground. And we'll deal with the ground later. So three cables times two wires. That equals six wires for all my number 14 cables. I take that times 2 cubic inch. That equals 12 cubic inch total for those three 14 twos. And then I cross it off. But since I don't have any other cables to deal with, I need to have my ground in there. And we know that the code tells us that our ground counts as one conductor of the largest conductor. So then I come down to this column and I say I have, I have one total conductor times the largest size, which is 2 cubic inch and number 14. 2 cubic inch. So now I have 2 cubic inch. Now I cross that out. I'm done with it. I have one device. So we know that we have one device and that's two wires of the size wire that's connected to it. So I have two wires total. I take that times the size of wire connected to it, which would be a number 14 in this case. So that's two cubic inches, and that equals four cubic inches total for that device. Now I'm completed with this device. I can cross it off. Now look at our cable clamps. The code tells us that all of our cable clamps together, just like a ground, count as one of the largest conductors in the box. Well, we know that the largest conductor in the box is a number 14. So if I come down here, I have one wire times two cubic inch And that equals two cubic inch. So that's 12. I guess I'm going to cross this off to you. So I have 12, 14, 18, 20. So I have 20. That looks terrible. Let me fix that. I have 20 cubic inch. Did you get that answer? Well, I hope so. Let's move on to the next example. It's a little more complicated. Since we did this last example, oh, hold on, let me get this smaller. Since we did this last example, I want you to try to do this on your own. So stop the video and see if you can do this one on your own. Well, welcome back for all of you that stopped the video. For you that didn't, chicken. 
Well, let's let's do this one. Remember, number 14 is equal to cubic inch. And now I have a, another size wire, number 12s. And if we looked on our table, we know that the number 12s equal 2.25 cubic inch. So let's start with this one. We have three 14 twos. So I know that I have three cables times two wires each. That equals six wires times two cubic inch because they are number 14s. That equals 12 cubic inch. I can cross that one off because I got more wires to deal with and we'll deal with our ground once we get to the larger one. So here I have two cables times two wires a piece and that equals four wires times 2.25 cubic inch and that equals eight and then four times 0.25 would be one so nine cubic inch. Can I cross that off? No, I still have to do my ground. So I know I have one ground wire, and it's times the largest size conductor in the box, which would be a number 12. So we take 2.25 cubic inches. So 1 times 2.25 is 2.25 cubic inch. Now I can cross this one off. Let's move on to cable clamps. Remember, it's just like the ground. All the cable clamps count as one conductor of the largest size. So let's just duplicate this formula right here. 1 times 2.25 equals 2.25 cubic inches. Now I can cross that one off. Well, here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. I have two devices and each device is connected to a different size wire. So let's deal with the 14 device. I have one device and we know it's two wires. So that equals two wires times the number 14 cubic inch, which is two. And that equals four cubic inch. Am I done with that one? Sure. Now I have a device connected to number 12. So I have one device times two wires. That equals two wires times 2.25 cubic inch, which is 4.5 cubic inch. So now I'm done with my devices. Do we need to do anything else? I don't think so. All right, so let's add all these up. I know that the 2.5 and the 2.5 and the 5.0 is going to end up with 0. So I'm going to add my 1 here. I have 13 plus 9 is 22, 24, 26, 30, 34. So this box would be 34 cubic inches. How'd you do? Were you able to get it on your own? I really hope so. You know, try some of these on your own and see what you can come up with. Now let's get on to our pull boxes. Well, I hope that you guys did good on those calculations. Why don't you try a couple on your own? Maybe use some real life scenarios that you've had at work and see how you do. If we get into Article 314.28, we start to talk about pull boxes. And when we talk about sizing a pull box, we need to talk about straight poles and then boxes with angle U poles and splices in them. With the pull box and a straight pole, you have to figure eight times the size of the largest raceway coming into that box. Well, if I have a box that has a two inch 
raceway coming into it. And I'm going to pull straight through that box. That is eight times that two inch would be, I would need 16 inches to the opposite wall where that, that conductor leaves the box. Now think about that for a minute. I'm not saying a 16 by 16 box. I'm saying 16 from where the raceway enters to where the raceway exits. The only width requirement would be however wide you need that box to be for that raceway to attach to it. That could really save a lot of money on a job and there are a lot of electricians out there that don't know that that's part of this rule. So they go ahead and order a box that's square when they can actually use a 4x4 gutter that is however long they need it. Keep that in mind next time you see somebody sizing a pull box and bring that up. You might save a little money for your company on their job. When we get into angle, U-pulls, and splices, the rules change a little bit. The rules are it's six times the largest conduit on a side to the opposite side of the box, plus the addition of the conduits that are also on that side in the same row. When you look at this graphic, you'll see that we have a two inch and five one inch conduits. Well, six times that two inch is 12 inches. And then when you add the five one inch conduits, which would be five inches, that box to the opposite side would have to be 17 inches. You don't have to count those other conduits in the second row because the conduit in the last row has more conduits in it and it would require the box to be larger. Keep that in mind. Now when you get to another thing that we have to do, especially with angle poles, where you come in the box on this side and you come out the box on the other, then we have to maintain a spacing between this conduit and that conduit of six times the size of the conduit that enclosed the same conductor. So if I have a four inch conduit coming in here and a four inch conduit going out of this box, I then have to maintain a straight line space between those two conduits of 24 inches. In this example, you'll see a four inch and two two inchers in that box. And because they come in uh, sides that are 90 degrees to each other, that box ends up being square. And if you take six times four, plus the two two inch conduits, now I have to have a 28 by 28 inch box to be able to have an angle pull in there with those conduits involved. And remember these rules, they are only for wire that is number four and larger. So this wouldn't apply to a number 12 J box. Keep that in mind as well. Well, I hope that you've learned a lot today. And as always, take notes, and I'll see you in class. Be safe.